Much like the many different kinds of knots you can tie, Roller Coaster Track can twist, turn, and invert in a number of inventive ways. A few years ago, we talked about some of the most unique roller coaster elements ever built, but there are even more of them to discuss. Recently, I had my viewers rank the coolest rare elements that I haven't discussed yet. So in my Listaholic Top 10 fashion, here are the 10 coolest looking rare elements as voted on by the viewers. Number 10. The Cobra Loop Built by Swiss manufacturer Intamin. This inversion can only be found on Storm Runner at Pennsylvania's Hershey Park. In our last Rare Elements video, we discussed Storm Runner's Flying Snake Dive, but it's not the only rare inversion on this coaster. This ride features three high-speed inversions, the first of which being the world's only Cobra Loop. Not to be confused with the Cobra Roll, this element starts out with a massive 135-foot-tall half loop. Passengers are flipped upside down before the track suddenly twists counterclockwise. From a bird's eye view, this inversion is unmistakable, and it looks like my first attempt to draw a cursive lowercase h in elementary school. Storm Runner in general is definitely one of my favorite launched roller coasters out there, and with two unique elements, it's a must-do for coaster fans. Number 9. The Dog Tongue Built by American manufacturer SNS Sansei, this inversion can only be found on Max Force at Illinois Six Flags Great America. The creator of this element is a man whose name you'll hear more than once on this list, Joe Draves. Draves is a high-profile designer who works for engineering consulting service Ride Centerline. This Utah-based company is responsible for designing some of the best coaster layouts on the market, which is no surprise considering one of its founders is the legendary Alan Schilke of RMC fame. Through the masterful magic of engineering, Draves has designed some truly outstanding elements over the years, one of which is the dog tongue. The name of this element supposedly comes from its shape, which resembles the tongue of a dog licking its lips. When designing Max Force, Draves was challenged with shoehorning the ride's layout between the park's railroad track and the historic Wizard roller coaster. So after the launch track, a unique element was needed to continue the ride's path. Just like the Cobra Loop, this massive element starts out with a large half loop. However, after leveling out at the top, the track inverts a second time into what resembles a dive loop, making this a double inverting element. What's especially awesome about this element is the upside down airtime you get on the second inversion. After inverting twice, the track actually dives under the entrance to the dog tongue. This is why the launch track has a hump at the end. Add in a heartline roll in a one of a kind max dive loop, and you've got a ride that's short but packed with flavor. Kind of like a spicy fried chicken sandwich slider. Number 8. The Negative G-Stall Loop Built by German manufacturer Gerstlauer. This specific inversion can only be found on hang time at California's Knott's Berry Farm. Interestingly enough though, it's not the first coaster to have an element of this name. Upon the opening of Monster at Iowa's Adventureland, park officials stated that one of the ride's main elements was a negative G-Stall Loop. They claimed it was the first of its kind in the Western Hemisphere. So when Hangtime opened in 2018, Knott's Berry Farm said it featured the second negative G-Stall loop in the Western Hemisphere. Interestingly enough though, the element featured on Hangtime is actually pretty different than the one on Monster. Monster's element, which features a twisted dive followed by a vertical loop, is the exact same element found on Junker at Finland's Power Park. That element was known as a finish loop, so now Monster's element is listed as being a finish loop on RCDB, while Hangtime's more unique inversion is known as a negative G-Stall loop on the same site. Semantics are fun. As for the element itself, it has a much twistier entrance than the finish loop, and while the finish loop inverts with a vertical loop, the way this element inverts much more closely resembles a sidewinder switching direction on the way down. On hang time, this element directly follows the beyond vertical drop, so you hit it with full speed. The way the train stalls at the top gives some incredible <clears throat> hang time, and you get some great airtime on it as well. Not to mention how thrilling the dip in the middle is. This element helps make this coaster a true crowd pleaser, and you could say it's the meatball that perfectly complements this twisty spaghetti-like layout. If you haven't gotten a chance to ride it yet, I highly recommend checking it out. Number 7. The Twisted Inline Rollback Built by Intamin and Gerstlauer This is the only inversion on this list built by two different manufacturers, and yet it's still rare. Believe it or not, the first of these elements was never meant to exist. Back in 2001, California's Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, then known as Six Flags Marine World, opened Vertical Velocity. 
This inverted launch shuttle coaster first opened as another typical impulse model, with a straight spike on one end and a twisting spike on the other. However, since it was over 150 feet tall, the coaster violated local height restrictions. Six Flags allegedly tried to work around the building restrictions by advertising it as 150 feet, but they were still ordered by local officials to modify or remove the coaster. In the end, they chose to modify it by taking the vertical twisting spike and having it redesigned to stick out at an angle. Almost 20 years later though, yet another roller coaster would utilize this element. Said to be inspired by V2's modification, this element was reincorporated on Mystic, a Gerslauer Infinity coaster at France's Wallaby Ronde d'Alps. This shuttle coaster also features an angled twist, serving the same shuttle coaster function as the one on vertical velocity. It rolls up the twist only for gravity to send it back down. Just think, if Six Flags hadn't violated local building restrictions, this coaster would have never come to be. Now that's what I call a butterfly effect. Number 6, the Kickflip, built by SNS Sansei. This element can only be found at Gale Force at New Jersey's Playland's Castaway Cove. It's yet another Joe Draves creation, and it really is all that in a bag of chips. You may remember Gale Force from my Top 10 Underrated Roller Coasters video, and my opinion still holds up today. This coaster is simply outstanding, from the double circuit ride experience to the surprising amount of airtime to the flat out bonkers layout. Seriously, this is perhaps the most unique compact launch coaster I've ever ridden. I admit I'm a bit hard pressed to pick my favorite part of this ride, but if I had to choose, I'd probably pick the one of a kind kickflip. This is the second element of the ride, being placed right after the initial top hat. Upon ascending the element, the track jerks to the side on the way down, giving a nice pop of airtime to the passengers. This element is named after the skateboarding trick of the same name, where a rider jumps in the air and flicks the board sideways with their feet to flip it. The jumping and flicking sensation the rider experiences is similar to what you get on this coaster. If you ever get a chance to go on it, try to imagine yourself on a skateboard. Playland's Castaway Cove is truly lucky to have such a memorable coaster in their lineup. Number 5, the Draken Fire Dive Drop, built by SNS Sansei. Yep, this is yet another creation of Joe Draves. For this element, Draves was directly inspired by the infamous 1992 roller coaster Draken Fire at Virginia's Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Originally conceived as a Bolliger and Mabillard coaster, the Swiss manufacturer declined the project due to scheduling issues. An American manufacturer, Aerodynamics, was brought on instead. Aero had attempted to mimic B&M's coaster design, using tubular steel supports and trying to incorporate different elements than they were used to. One element they were interested in was the vertical loop on Kumba at Florida's Busch Gardens Tampa, which actually wraps around the lift hill. However, they reportedly couldn't figure out how to do that, so to compensate, they decided to place a large corkscrew in the middle of the first drop. The ride would go down in history as one of the worst roller coasters of all time, being widely lambasted for its roughness. But as the old saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. This wraparound corkscrew would end up inspiring the world's only drop and fire dive drop, found only on Steel Curtain at Pennsylvania's Kennywood. In an interview with Coaster Force, Joe Drave said he was directly inspired by Drakenfire's corkscrew when designing Steel Curtain. By placing a diving corkscrew during the first drop, Draves was able to design the tallest inversion in the world, standing 197 feet off the ground. Hell yes! While I haven't gotten a chance to ride this coaster yet, the reception from riders has been insanely positive. Many have praised the forceful elements, the airtime, and of course, that unique drop and fire dive drop. Needless to say, I can't wait to get on this coaster. Number 4, the non-inverting Cobra Roll, built by Intamin. The Cobra Roll is by far one of the most iconic elements in roller coaster history. It's perhaps most well known as the first element on Dutch manufacturer Vacoma's boomerang model. So how do you take such a famous double inverting element, keep it from going upside down, and still make it exciting? I have a phrase I'd like to use yet again, never underestimate Intamin. Just last month, Wallaby Belgium premiered Conda, a brand new Intamin mega coaster. First announced in 2018 at the annual IAPA Expo, this ride's layout immediately became the hottest new topic in the amusement industry. Perhaps the most notable feature announced would be its non-inverting Cobra Roll. This element is exactly what it sounds like, a Cobra Roll shaped section of track that does everything in its power not to take riders upside down. But just because it doesn't go upside down doesn't mean it's dull, far from it. As described by the manufacturer, 
This element provides, quote, fantastic side-by-side -side rolling maneuvers. And while I personally haven't gotten a chance to check out this coaster yet, I'm curious as to what this element is like. If you've gotten a chance to ride it, feel free to comment down below. Number 3. The Windcatcher Tower, built by Intamin. This is without a doubt the most elegant and visually appealing element on this list. This element was first built in 2011 on Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa. According to park officials, the element was built to stand out in the layout and attract the attention of park guests. Vice President of Design and Engineering Mark Rose said, quote, Social media is such a big part of culture today. People will take pictures with their phones. When they broadcast that on their Facebook and things, their friends will say, Where is that? It's unusual. I don't know where that is. I've never seen anything like that. Then a dialogue will begin. The element directly follows a 60 mile per hour launch, which is also said to be the top speed of a cheetah. The train zooms into this element, ascending it with a nice pop of airtime at the peak. At the top, passengers maneuver a figure eight section of track, getting a marvelous panoramic view of the park and the surrounding Tampa area. After meandering around for a little bit, the train dives downwards to continue the layout. Though this coaster isn't super intense, it's actually one of my favorites. The long layout, multiple launches, jubilant heartline roll, and thrilling interaction with the scenery all give this ride an extremely high fun factor in my book. And clearly others in the industry felt the same, because just a few months ago, a similar roller coaster would open at Happy Valley in Jiangsu, China. This coaster named Light of Revenge also features a windcatcher tower, but to this day, only Light of Revenge and Cheetah Hunt have this element. Truly a rare and unique innovation. Number 2. The Double Inverting Stall Built by American manufacturer Rocky Mountain Construction RMC's ride catalog needs no introduction. But the most popular ride in their lineup is by far their iBox Hybrid Coaster. The company is well known in the industry for taking unpopular wooden roller coasters and giving them an epic makeover, complete with new track and new elements. One such roller coaster was Robin Hood at the Netherlands Wallaby Holland. In 2019, this Vacoma wooden coaster was completely redone and would reopen as Untamed. Gone was the moderate wooden coaster layout and in its place was a new course packed with airtime and all new elements. One of these elements is the double inverting stall. This element is similar to the zero G stall in that the pathway stalls in the middle. However, instead of stalling upside down, the track stalls sideways. So the train flips, stalls sideways, and flips again. The stall in the middle gives some spectacular sideways airtime, and it's a surreal section of the ride that to this day doesn't exist on any other RMC coasters. It's worth noting that the ride was designed by the aforementioned Alan Schilke, and it's just a further explanation as to why his name is so influential. Here's to many more amazing RMC creations in the future. Number 1. The Saxophone, built by SNS Sansei. This element solely exists on the Screaming Squirrel model, an extremely rare breed of roller coaster which only has two installations Man of War at China's Mysterious Island, and Sequoia Magic Loop at Italy's Gardaland. This coaster model first made its debut at SNS's testing facility in Logan, Utah. The idea was to take the concept of a wild mouse coaster and essentially flip it on its side. Instead of hairpin turns, the cars maneuver hairpin inversions known as saxophones. The name of course comes from how the track is shaped like the woodwind instrument of the same name. These inversions look like something out of a clickbait thumbnail, and the fact that there are long stretches of upside down track really make this coaster something you'd have to see to believe. Although the model has received mixed negative reviews from riders, it's hard to deny how wonderfully strange its saxophones look. And to be honest, I'm actually willing to give this ride a shot based on its uniqueness alone. What can I say, I'm a sucker for innovation. Before we wrap things up, I just want to give a special shout out to my new Patreon supporters. Verbal shout outs start at the gold tier, so if you don't hear your name, it will be listed at the end of the video. Here's a special shout out to ThomasFan3751, Super Duper Looper for Life, and Stunt22. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at ThemeParkCrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.